I am here and I am microphone ready. Let's make sure the volume's up tonight because I have a feeling that, oh, last night, every night I fuck around with, oh, look, it wasn't up. Every time I put it on here, it's not up. Now y'all can hear me. We're not going to do a repeat of last night. Why can't I hear you? Yeah, I know. Craziness. All right. This is my bed face. I literally have been sick for nine days. This is day nine, eight, nine. I've had enough, like enough. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being sick. I'm never sick. I lie because I'm sick. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, it's getting better. And I have to go to the film festival. So that is where I'm headed off to. So I'm trying to get better right now. I sleep in my Vicks. I put onions in my socks. I inhaled tea tree oil over the diffuser thing. I did all of that. And I know the energy is weird. Everybody, what, what are you sick with? Well, I probably, whatever you want me to have, I probably have. I don't know. I just, it's like I had asthma or I can't breathe. One or the other. I'm not sure what it is, but it's weird. Everybody, hi, love is Scorpio. Everybody's been sick. Like everybody's been sick. And it's weird. Yes, I've tried Manuka honey. I tried onions and honey. I can't do that anymore. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, bronchitis. Yeah, Nola girl, it probably is because I'm asthmatic. And then I ran up that mountain and threw myself into practically pneumonia. So yeah, it's terrible. Oh, thanks. I just put my makeup on and I don't know if it's perfect, but I tried. I can't find all my brushes. Tallulah bites them and rips them. And then I'm like, where's my spoolie brushes? But yeah, thank you. I've been doing my makeup my entire life <laughs> myself. Costco to Costco. Wait, Costco to Costco to Costco notice today. I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, two days in a row because I'm going away. Let's see. I have just swollen lymph nodes. But I, yeah, I even did lymphatic massage. I did the sauna. I did the chiropractor. He massaged on my um, sinuses, which I want to punch him. Pop, stop it. Stop it, Garrick. Stop doing that. He's like, no, I'm doing it really soft. I'm like, you're trying to fucking kill me. Anyway, I did ginger. I've done ginger tea and honey. You name it. I've done, I'm going to a film festival. I can't say where because if I say where and I go there, somebody might show up there. So I'm going to wait till after I go there. These are all MAC colors and whatever I put on my lip. I don't know where I honestly, so I'll tell you where I am after. It's my friend's film and it's about the foster care system. And this film's a contender. So she's really good. She did the film on um, over medicating of children in our society. So I'm going to support her. That's what I'm going to do. And it's gonna be fun. So yeah, Lila's so cute. I know, Lila dress is so cute. She's so cute. She's 12 now. So everybody watch out. That girl is 12. Yeah, they don't, they're, she, she's very cute. She's the cutest. Um, yeah, so anyway, we lost the submarine. I heard about that, but I don't know that I understand that. Yeah, the film festival is going to be fun. And I will take the opportunity to hike prior to meeting up with the girls. Because they all want to do like fun things. And I'm like... I'll meet you and do the fun things after I go hiking. That's what I'll do. Yeah, the naked cards, I put them away. I wish the trans would get the fun. <laughs> trans can be on the chats. You know who can't be on the chats? People who make stupid comments. We don't want stupid. Hi, Canyon Country, Alice V. Canyon Country all the time. You know what we want? We want not stupid people on the chat. So if you're fucking stupid, get off the chat. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Titanic tour submarine. I don't even know what that is. Like the Titanic, sinking of the Titanic. And I've got to tell a Keith story because there's that. So for those of you that know, I had an astrologer friend named Mark. And he used to come over and eat dinner and breakfast and all that shit since my, since my Jason was born. So he was always at our family functions, birthday parties, Christmas dinner. <coughs> Excuse me. We would go to breakfast. So when Keith was about 10 or 11... He was really familiar with Mark. So we're eating breakfast one day and Mark's talking about being reincarnated from 
the uh, Titanic where he was an 18-year-old girl that died on the Titanic, right? So we get home and me and Keithy are eating dinner and Keith goes, he goes like this to me and goes, yeah, just like your friend that thinks he was a girl on the Titanic. It was the funniest story. Anyway, it was really funny because he could never let that go. He goes, are we going to see Mark? I mean, the Titanic survivor. <laughs> it was just so funny because he just couldn't get through his head what the hell he was talking about. Anyway, long, boring story short, the Titanic at that time they had all of the financial leaders in the world on the Titanic. That is why they sunk it. Understand, nothing ever happens without these people orchestrating it in order to do something. Thank you, Rita. Thank you for that non-stupid person on here. Yeah, we don't care what you are, but if you're stupid, you have to go. Like Jason used to say when he was a little boy, if you are stupid and you are fucking. He used to throw the two words together like that. Oh, no, 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 you've been fed. I fed her, and look, now she's going into her spot. So, oh, Brittany, I'm sorry. Yeah, my brother, oh, my gosh. Wait, wait, what, 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 whoa, come back here. My brother died six months ago. Today, his best friend, his best friend died yesterday. Oh, my God, what, was it from fentanyl? I'm assuming it's a drug thing. I'm sorry if it, Tallulah, you've been fed. You don't need to stalk me. We all know what you're doing. Look at her. She's like, yeah, you need to feed me. But see, I tricked everybody. I fed her before I came on. So I don't know what she's doing. But anyway, she's the mascot. So that's that. Um, oh, my God. Y'all say she's a chunky girl. Oh, fentanyl. Yeah, I figured it was that. Stop doing drugs, y'all. They're putting fentanyl. Okay, my website... It keeps saying error. Well, it depends where you're trying to book. I'm going to go on and look. If you try to book, it should be open to book unless all the spots are gone. It depends what day. You might have to jump to the next month. Because I'm only doing, I have a baby coming, a grandbaby, and I have work commitments. And I'm finishing the other work. You know how it goes. Anyway, let me check and look. Yeah, so let's see. My kids would say... Big, stupid, dummy head. <laughs> you big, stupid, dummy head. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, okay. I know you're looking. I'm looking. Let me look. I'm looking. It should be working. Paul has to cut. I know she doesn't look chunky. She does look chunky. No, she's not chunky. Why are you calling my cat fat? You calling me fat? Are you fucking, call you fucking calling me fat? <laughs> oh, thanks, Audrey. Thank you for that. No, that's hilarious. Are you calling me fat? Yeah, everything is like, are you calling me fat? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on here. I'm sorry about my raspy thing. Yeah, I'm sorry your brother and his friend. Why the fuck are kids doing? You guys don't understand. I mean, okay, wait. Uh, timeline jump, evident. Oh, I got you, evident at Costco. Yeah, no, the timeline jump was like Saturday into Sunday, and I got a new kitten. Aw, sweet. Tallulah ain't fat. She's a curvy girl. And she's a natural curvy girl. Yeah, she didn't have to Kardashian up. She's cute. All right, I'm looking here to see if my calendar's open. So, let me just look. It's probably only one hour and 30 minutes open because I don't do 15s anymore. I only do what the schedule permits. Okay, so in June, I guess the 29th is sold out. Um, the 28th, there's 11.05 a.m. Oh, that's for an hour. Okay, and then we have time frames on, um, whatever, 10th, 11th, 17th, 18th, 20th, whatever. It goes into July. So go check over there. I'm not really sure, but go check. Um, I know, honey, I, I don't know why kids, like I have a rebellious kid. We know his name is Jason. Rebellious as shit. I don't understand why people don't know the government puts drugs out there. Like, I swear, I was 10, and I knew the government puts drugs. I know my cat's fabulous. She is not fat. You all, she is not fat. She is sexy and cute as far as cats go. I'm not a male cat, so I don't really know. But she's cute. She's pretty. Um, I don't know why you do drugs. I don't know why people drink because it's legal. Do you not know the government wants you to think that? Do you know how many disorders are happening now from the legalization of pot? 
Do you realize the anxiety? Because they put the, um, what do you call it, uh, preservatives. Do you understand that? They put preservatives on there and they make it. I don't know about the Titanic. I don't know about that. I'm sorry. I don't know about the Titanic at all. I can't talk it. I know nothing about it. Um, yeah, I can't breathe. That's what I'm saying. She's a bombshell kitty. You fucking hot kitty. I'm talking about a cat though. She's cute. Um, yeah, anything the government says is okay. You should know they want to hurt you. So the government, when they say alcohol on every street corner, that's a concerted effort for people to be caught in enslavement and then think that by drinking and doing drugs, they're doing something, okay? That's what it, a <laughs> teenage daughter is rebelling. Yeah, and fentanyl, they're just putting everything in everything like because you're stupid and you do drugs. Don't let them win with drugs. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't drink alcohol. Like, I understand everybody's like, but you got to have fun. Those things aren't fun when they're from the government. If you're going to make your own wine, make your own wine because there's a lot of preservatives. Yeah, stop smoking the weed. The weed is so bad. Um, oh, see, thank you, Lorraine. <laughs> Five people in sub. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. I don't know. They're doing a ritual on the, I don't know when the Titan, I have to read this. I'm sorry. I'm not well versed because I've been up since five working because I'm that far behind because I got sick y'all. And so if you're waiting for me, I am sending it. I am doing the best I can. I will be answering texts after this. I am one person. I know no one cares. Um, anyway, so I got to get rid of that ring light. There it is. Billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, the bill, but they did that on purpose. It was a financial takeover. It was a financial takeover. The It was a ritual, the Titanic. Um, yeah, so it was a uh, Titanic submarine. Let's see what happened. Um, these are all fucking bullshit rituals, okay? Submarine on expedition missing with five people. How did it go missing? Are we that stupid we buy into this shit? Oh, it just disappeared. I don't know. Maybe it crashed. Let's see. Missing with five aboard. Search and rescue. By the way, nobody's going to search and rescue anything. Let's see. The vessel submerged on Sunday morning and the crew of the Polar Prince, the ship that ferried the submersible and blah, 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 lost contact an hour and 45 minutes into the dive because we had a fucking timeline shift on Sunday. So, um... Yeah, no, I know. Thank you. Most of the psychics on, um, I was going to say on T-Mobile, on TikTok, and most of them on YouTube are not day-to-day -day working psychics. Everybody wants to be a star so they don't have to work. I have to work day-to-day -to, -day to pay my bills. I do work day-to-day. -day. I'm constantly doing that. That's I'm a working psychic. So when you're a working psychic, you have to actually work. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So the company did not say how many people were on board the missing vessel. The entire focus is on the crew members. La, 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 It's a remote area. Okay, so why are you, I don't understand. Let's see, the sub is believed to have a 96-hour sustained cap, cap, um, capability if there's an emergency. We're making our best effort. Well, they should know the route that the sub submarine goes on because it goes to show you the wreck of the Titanic, right? I'm going to move my chair. There. So if there's a wreck, and now there's that light on that side. If there's a wreck, right, then they should know where it is. But there was a timeline change. So they open portals and they do all kinds of things. Do timelines have names? Not that I know of. I can just feel when the earth shifts. Timeline change, as I explained to you last night, is like having... One energy here, one, and they go like this, and they become one. So your reality shifts, but it shifts ever so slightly. So you live in the same, um, you know, you live in the same house, you have the same people that you date, but their responses may be different. Yeah, 97% word of mouth, exactly. Oh, I know it's a ritual, Charlene, as sure as shit. These people paid 250000 to go and see the type. Well, you know, I don't know what to say about them, but good for them if they're that stupid. And no offense, I feel sorry for them. I'm not going to be a cutthroat bitch right now, but what the hell are people thinking? I mean, I guess they thought it was safe. Hopefully they find them. So, you know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, Venus retrograde will bring lovers back. Do not get surgery on a Venus retrograde for your beautification, right? The problem is... 
getting something that can go down there. I'm sure for 10 hours. I mean, I don't know why my mic is right here. Hello. And how are you? See, the timeline shift for me means people in my life, i.e. family, are talking to me. It's unfucking believable because that shit hasn't happened in years. That shit hasn't happened where they're nice to me. As in they speak respectfully. Not happened. But it's happening. So I'm okay with this. Yeah, I don't want lovers back either. I don't have any lovers. So if I did, I wouldn't want them back. Um, okay. <laughs> I know the mic's here. I've been having... Because we're time... Understand what they're doing is they're opening portals all over. When Bill Gates... Okay. When Bill Gates said... When Billy Bitch Gates... Little sweater wearing demon... Okay. With woman hips... And no offense to women, because I don't have fucking hips like that. But anyway, when that little sweater-wearing bitch said, I'm going to hire and patent a way to block out the sun. Don't worry. We're just going to make sure that global warming. Lie. Lie, Billy Gates. So when he said he was doing that, what they're doing is they're opening portals all over the consciousness of the earth. They're opening doorways. Okay, in order to let in entities, entities are coming in. Okay, he wears those sweaters so he appears all comfy. I know what he's doing. So, because when a man puts, puts on a cashmere sweater, he's all cuddly like that. That's what that ugly prick is trying to do. But he's ugly and he's stupid. He is, stu that guy created nothing. He stole, his parents must be just embarrassed. His wife had to run away from him. I mean... Yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm lonely and alone and I wish my love would come back. Okay, Gordy, let's not say that. The hips don't lie exactly, Beth. Do we have hips like that bitch? <laughs> no, I don't have hips like him. And he's fucking like your grandmother's hips. You know, he was really a German Nazi in the war. And then he just jumped bodies. You know that, Billy Coat Gruff. Exactly. He just dumped. Hi, Monique. Monique. He just jumped bodies and then he's like, yeah, I still got my woman hips. Let me cook up some kids for you. That's that bitch. That's who he is. Terrible. He's like the dumbest human being. And why people listen to him? You have to stop bending over for money. Meaning just because he's got billions, you don't have billions. He's never giving you money. He doesn't care about you. You're a parasite to him. So having said that, why y'all go, oh my God, it's Bill Gates. Bill Gates, can you tell us why you think the vaccines? Can you? Can you tell us? Who are you to tell us? First of all, stop that shit. Do you think his ex-wife is a good... No, I don't. She married him. My dad was torpedoed by Nazis. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah, of course. They've got everybody in war. Great. <laughs> yeah, I'm mentally ill, so I don't know that I take me seriously. <laughs> um, but you're an Aquarius and you've met an Aries. Run. Go. Run. <laughs> run. Run, run. Okay, run. Um, yeah, it, it, no, Gordy, listen. Listen, I totally get it. I want my old life back, even though I wasn't happy in my old life because I would have my Keithy. However, what I want you to do, what I want you to do, yeah, that's what John said. I was worldly. <laughs> anyway, what I want you to do, Gordy, if you can, because I've had to do this. So when you're miserable because you don't have what you think you want, okay, perception, what you think you want, I want you to focus on you. So I want you, Gordy, to do things that make you, Ashley, I love you. I live for you too, Ashley. What I want you to do is I want you to practice focusing on yourself and what you, Gordy, enjoy doing. And I don't care if you're happy. People say, but I'm not happy. I get that. I'm not happy. But I want you to put a smile on your face and I want you to act as if you are happy. So I want you to take and do things. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. I want you to take and do things that make you happy. So anything that makes you smile, okay? So if it's eating ice cream, like curtail it a bit, but because that always makes me smile. I'm like, ice cream, mm, yummy. So anyway, if you want to do something that you enjoy, okay, anything, I don't care what it is. The focus is not to get back your ex-lover, but to actually... Um, 
your focus is to actually do what makes you smile. Anything, anything. If it's buying a new pair of shoes, lipstick, hiking, painting, watching a funny movie, George Carlin, any of that, whatever it is, do that. Popcorn makes me smile and fat. Yeah, well, you got to eat the diet popcorn. Just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Ashley, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's very kind of you. Everybody's so generous on here. Thank you. Um, yeah, watch whatever you want. Jump over to the other channel. I don't care. Get off mine. Bye. Um, yeah, no, do whatever you want. You guys, you're not going to bother me if you ever go to other psychics or 20 other psychics. I tell people to go to other psychics and other astrologers. I have no problem. I believe there's enough work for any everybody. Um, and yeah, probably if you go over there, report back on what they say because Tina Turner was definitely one of them. And it was specific. So they're going to do the usual that they do on this channel where they say... She died. She had a nice life. She's at peace. Not everyone is at peace on the other side. There. Yeah, clean your genie. Good. Genie Parker there, if I'm saying that correctly. Very good. Put that, clean up your house. I know we all scream for ice cream. That's all I live for is ice cream. I actually love ice cream. Like I'll pretty much do you for ice cream, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll do it for ice cream. You got ice cream? <laughs> Come here. I'll do it. Um, anyway, okay. So, no, we're definitely in purgatory. If you haven't figured that out yet, <laughs> God ain't coming here to save you. <laughs> There's no saving you here. Yeah, Ashley, I'm easily bought. It's ice cream. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, vanilla. I don't care what kind of ice cream. Just give me ice cream. I'll do whatever you want. Like, I don't care. I'm okay. I'm a, I'm an ice cream whore, <laughs> right? Okay. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Gordy, anything that makes you happy. Cause I want to see you smile because you're focused on what you don't have. And if you focus on what you don't have, that tells cookies are delicious. That tells the, I can't eat cookies. I'm very sad about that. I've eaten two pieces of cake in the last month and I'm still like paying for it. And butter pecan would throw me over the edge. So would key lime pie. Just no more pie and cake. All right. So you want to not focus on what you don't have because the more you say you don't have it, the more that the universe hears that. So you don't have that. No one cheats death. You just didn't die at the time you thought you would die. So start thinking about what you do have and what makes you smile. So if something makes you smile, then just smile. That may be all you have in your life right now and things will change, okay? Like th I sound like a smoker, a heavy smoker. Things will change. You know what I'm saying? Things will change. So I think that you need to just smile. That's it. That's it. Yeah, the lip color is a combination. I was talking on the phone. I have no idea what I put on my lips. I'm always putting... Mac over everything, but I couldn't tell you what the liner was. Well, then look for a different job. Do a different thing. Do something different. Just do something different. It's okay. It's okay. But absolutely do something that makes you smile because really that's all you have. If you worry about what you don't have, you're assuming that you were meant to have it. How do you know you were meant to have it? How do you know there isn't something out there waiting for you? How do you know that, right? You don't. Okay. Ashley, Ashley Wolf, Tina Turner is part of the elite that control this world. I'm going to, for the people in the back on my channel, I'm just going to say this. And this is just from my experience, pitching shows, working in television, not well, getting banned from shit too, getting banned from Paramount, literally blackballed for being a witch. Yeah, that's a story. That's a true story. That was set up by a friend of mine who had me make a phone call that made me to appear to be like a witch. I wasn't being a witch, but they thought I was a witch. So I got banned. You know why they thought I was a witch? Because they do shit like that. So there you go, Ashley, right? So I got banned. Okay, so here's the story. I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah, no, they do. Who gets banned from somewhere from being a witch? Right? Sounds like a badge of honor. Exactly. Who gets banned? Yes. Yes, Ashley. Right? Right. You know how Paramount is. 
Yeah, they had female bosses and stuff, and they were all fine. They were, like, fine. I enjoyed the luncheons. I enjoyed pitching the TV shows. And, I mean, I went to pitch meetings and all of that, and we were up against people. And as I said, I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again. We were doing a show called Dining with the Dead way back then, and that show was up against Lisa Williams' psychic show. I'm saying that again. The reason, and we were told by the network person who was a friend of the producer that we went in on this show with, Lisa Williams' show happened because, okay, happened because her manager, husband, boyfriend at the time, who wasn't her kid's father, but was somebody that she married, I believe, he was hooking it on up with old Mervy Griffin. Mervy the perv, Mervy the I fuck boys, but marry Zsa Zsa's sisters, whatever. Anyway, so there was an overall deal with the network for her. That is how that show got on the air. The minute he died, she went off the air. Well, as soon as that contract was up. So I, I don't know anything about Lisa Williams. I'm just telling you that like literally we showed up at the same time and there were eight shows they were thinking of at that time. So keep in mind, if you're going to be on a long-term show, they want to be able to control you. They want you to do what they want you to do. They also want to harness and take your name when you're making money. That is why Prince put the name Slave across the side of his face. Slave. Because they took his name. The artist formerly known as... I have signed into perpetuity, we writer. I signed that... I got in a fight with a show for James Van Prague. He was on it. They sent me the contract. And <laughs> the one thing about John is when he would see that, he'd be like, what the fuck are you signing? They could use your image on anything. A tampon box, a porn box. I'm like, why are they going to use Psychic on a porn box? But he's absolutely correct they do write into perpetuity if you do coast to coast which i've done i actually sign that into perpetuity into perpetuity into perpetuity why would you fucking write that on a contract why would you write that on a contract why i don't know what james is doing i don't i i have no i didn't really know him personally i've run into him but i don't really know him but they put into perpetuity. Now, when you're getting ready to go on a TV show, obviously, you're going to live to be 70, 80. So, like, into perpetuity, dude, when I'm dead, crippled, you know, Annette Fudicello, I have a life-altering MS and I can't move. What then with your perpetuity? They try to trick you into it and sneak shit in. John would catch it every time. Every time he would catch it. He's like, look at this bitch contract. Um, how did you get your, well, I sucked dick to get my, <laughs> I sucked dick to get my TV jobs. No, I'm kidding. Here's how, <laughs> I just always wanted to say that. Like, um, Ellen, uh, um, Aaron Brockovich, I sucked a bunch of dick. Anyway, <laughs> Ashley, Ashley, you would appreciate that. And I sucked a bunch of dick to get that. Here's how I got my first job on camera in this country. This is a true story. So. Again, I had just had baby Jason and he was a little tyke and I got out of it because I got banned and then I gave up on my life and wanted to just get off the planet and became severely depressed and never went out, didn't give a shit. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'm like, ah, I, I don't want to, I didn't want to be an on-camera person late in life. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be attractive, didn't want to be old. And that's really how I felt. That's an honest sentiment. Whether you think I'm attractive or not, not the point. But that was a, um, a I like Bailey. Um, but anyway, I, I got a traffic ticket. This is not an unusual thing for our household. I think Keith had a bunch. I had a bunch. Jason had a bunch. So I got a traffic ticket. And it was too late for me to do, like, you know, months ahead. So I had to, no, they hate, they hate good looking psychics on TV because you might sound intelligent and be attractive. Okay. They hate that because if you're intelligent and you're articulate and you take care of yourself, you're a threat because they, people are going to listen to you. They don't like that. They like psychics to be clowns. They like us to look like clowns and be caricatures of whatever. Not John Edwards. He was a pretty good looking guy, normal looking guy. Um, even, even, uh, what's his name? James Van Prague, a normal looking guy for, you know, him. Anyway, I had to go to traffic school and John's like, you only have a week 
And so everywhere I went was booked, like everywhere you look online. And this is back in whenever I just had Jason. So it had to be 92. So anyhow, I go to this traffic school in Hollywood and I had to go to it two different nights because in two different nights, I know about chip coffee through the production team and I'm not going to comment. Anyway, um, I go to the traffic school and it's comedic traffic school in Hollywood. So I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Four hours one night and I come back the next night. Four hours the next night, right? So I'm in there and there's a teacher. And each time you come in, she's like, so what's your name and what do you do for a living? So I said, my name's Sloan. I'm an astrologer. I'm a psychic, whatever I said, but something along those lines. So I did the four hours of traffic school and I came back the next night. There was a whole different class. So everybody's standing up and saying what they do. And this guy named Chip, I remember his name, Chip, like potato chip, which made me all the more fond of him. Chip stands up and he goes, hi, I'm a producer for an NBC show called The Other Side, where we deal with psychics and mediums and astrologers. So the traffic school teacher says, hey, no, not Chip Coffee. The, the, no, this guy was a producer. The traffic school teacher says to me, says to him, oh, you should meet Sloan. She's a psychic and an astrologer. When I left that class, I had a gig on that TV show and I ended up being on that TV show up until November, October actually, till <laughs> Chip Pringle, until they canceled the show and I was about to have Keith. So I was about a month away from having teeth. Then I, teeth, Keith. I was, on, I was on the show and then, um, no, I didn't meet, I never did. And then I went on the talk show circuit with all of the 9210, like Gabrielle Carteris and all of that. So I went on the talk show circuit with that. And of course, yes, in the 90s, yeah. I did divorce, I did adoption, I did all kinds of stuff. But I got that job because Chip was looking for some, nobody wants to show up on a TV show like that. Okay, well, I have no comments on the Long Island Medium because I'm not going to comment on it. Anyway, I, there's a whole backstory there. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, but anyway, that was how I got that particular job. And after that, I went on Monta any, every TV show I would you know, get offers on and go. Because keep in mind, when you're on TV, they don't want some like drunken jackass out there either. So you have to be somewhat articulate to speak if you're going to get out there and speak, right? Unless they want to tell you. And um, yeah, I'm not going to comment, Nola girl. I'm not going to comment. Anyway, there was a there was another TV show before her TV show, and that was a stolen idea concept. Whatever. Anyway, long story, boring story. They put their own spin on it, not the point. So yeah, so that's how I did. And then I, I traveled in the circuit of psychics, you know, on TV all of the time, right? I traveled in those circles. And then around 2009 or 10, I got blackballed because of a former fucking whack job friend of mine who tried to get me thrown off my own show and off 2020. But I didn't believe people when they told me because she was probably what we would call a narcissist, female narcissist. And I didn't believe when people said she was going behind my back. No, I'm not black. I'm not being blocked now. No, I mean, I don't give a shit now. You're, you won't, I, I don't, I didn't need to be on TV. I didn't need to do anything. I don't care. Like, I don't fucking care. Like, don't fucking hire me. Please don't hire me. <laughs> I don't care. I do my own shit. And I'm more successful because I can use my voice the way I choose to. The last thing I did, the last thing I did, I think, oh, was um, E! Entertainment, E! Entertainment 2018. And some random girl phoned me on Facebook and I just went into the studios and just did a thing in the hallway. They actually shot the episode in the hallway. Like they put a box there and I'm wearing that orange dress and it's about Selena Gomez and the weekend. And I'm just like, uh, uh, like that. That's it. 10 minutes in, out, boom, gone. I did uh, the 411 show. I predicted shit on, Anna, um, oh my God, Brad Pitt and his twins and all that shit, right? But the last, last thing I did was Million Dollar Listing. Okay, and I went on that show and what they did is they had, of course, another psychic 
who they hired, who bailed for whatever reason. And I was up running in the mountains, of course. I got this text when I got back to my car and they're like, can you come? And I was like, well, fucking hair doesn't look good and I don't have any clothes and I put my makeup on and sweaty. So I didn't even shower. I just literally put my shit on my face and went up there. And the producers said to me, said to me, hey, we want you to act like this is really scary and really wrong and da, 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 like that, right? And I'm like, here's what I learned. Whatever the producer tells you they want, because I'm not an actor. I'm doing my real work, not an actor. So I agree with the producers. And I do whatever I want when the wording comes out, because when the camera's on, they can't turn it off. And that is what I do. That is what I do. I do what I do the way I want to do it. I don't listen to them. They want you. Yeah, they want, they tell you the scenario, but I get what I get. And I don't care if you fucking like what I get or I don't get. I don't give a fuck. I do not care. I do not care. You know, I don't care. Um, so that's it. And that was all I did. I wish psychic kids were around when I was coming up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, psychics are not going to get everything and it's not like they portray it on TV. And I will tell you, I will tell you. So I used to teach a meditation class long time ago, long, long time ago. Keith and Jason were little and it had to be around 2004, 2005, somewhere around there because um, my mother-in-law was still alive at the time. So I'm just going by that. But anyway, um, my class was going to see a psychic, okay? Was going to see a psychic and the psychic was, I'm not sure if it was John Edwards or it was, I think it might've been John Edwards. You know, I don't really know who it was. I can't remember. But they all went down as a group to go see the psychic in a, in a like where there was 200 people or 400 people or whatever. And you're all paying $30 a ticket. I want you to keep in fucking mind, okay? I want you to keep this in mind. When you buy your ticket online, yes, anybody can Google anything. You know, anybody can Google fucking anything, right? Um, so any psychic who has your name can Google your shit or have a PI, whatever. But my class went down there and they went to, you know, do it, do whatever. So one of my class participants, the people that used to come to my house way back then, so I have 20 people in my house, my living room meditating. Anyway, one of them was a person who worked that, that arena, that forum, and I can't remember where it is, but it was somewhere where they hold big events. Anyway, she literally told me about the earpiece that they have. And so out in the audience, before you go in, before you show your ticket and go in, you know, through the doors, like a rock concert, if you and I are out there and we want to see Keith, you're like, oh, I hope Keith comes through. Let's just say, right? And you're like, yeah. And you're, you, you know, it's so sad. His motorcycle, I hope they pick it up. The people with the earpieces are going around the outside because you're talking about your dead people. That's what you're doing. And that is who they bring up. Oh, that's so great. We, we, that's so great. There you go. That's how they bring it up. They're not going to go out there and risk themselves cold when money's involved, period. That's why I don't do that. So that's what they do. Yeah. So, and then, oh my God. So my friend, <laughs> who's not my friend, who actually told um, 2020, they phoned me that, that, whatever. Anyway, she didn't want me doing the thing that I was doing. Like, fuck off. Okay. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, long, boring story short, she took me to a... Um, these two British mediums at another medium's house, way the hell Chino or something, gone from where I live. I'm in the valley. Anyway, all of that aside, so we go in and there's a whole bunch of people, I don't know, 20 people waiting to go into the garage where they're going to do this thing. And as I'm sitting with my friend, she completely passed out. She was a really good medium. I'm not going to knock her. I'm not going to knock her. She is such a good medium. Anyway, she... <laughs> <coughs> she passed out. <coughs> okay, look. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. Mm. She passed out from the energy. A whole group of people lined up in front of us that were dead on the other side. I've never seen 
such a group of people. Like they don't show up like that to me. I've never had that happen like that. There was a whole group of people. I mean, I was hearing shit and I was like, this is fucked up. Why are they coming to me? Because the male and the husband and wife team were over there. Before we went into the garage, they made us leave our purses. John was so mad at me. Definitely throw chakra. John was so fucking mad at me. He's like, you don't leave your purse out there. They could steal your wallet, use your stuff, leave it in your trunk, but don't bring your, don't bring your purse. Don't ever do that. But I didn't know they were going to do it. So they, they, they metal wanded us. Okay. We're two mediums. We're walking in there. They metal wand us. We sit down. They would not let me sit by my friend. They did not know who I do wear everything, but I, I just have my throat covered right now, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me sit by my friend. They did not know my name because my friend, I was her plus one. She never put my name, okay? Never put my name down. Her name was there. If you looked her up, she had a dead husband and blah, 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 blah. If you look my name up, I have a dead son. So you would know what to bring up, right? They never talked one, it was total setup. Total setup. The most embarrassing shoddy thing I've ever, ever seen. Hi from Simi Valley. I'm right up the street from you. The most shittiest thing I've ever seen. I, I mean, they weren't even good at reading. And what they were going to demonstrate was ectoplasm. So when a spirit comes in the body, they were going to show the ectoplasm. So like in Ghostbusters, the ectoplasm. So the husband was straight jacketed <laughs> in a chair and then the, the wife went around reading and then something would touch your head. Like it was one of those hand things. It was so, I don't know what, and it was like $350 a ticket. My friend had an extra ticket. That's why I went. I don't know how she got that. I And the medium that was hosting it, shame on her. Totally full of shit. Acting like it wasn't fake. It was as fake as fake, as fake as fake could be. And I was like... We left there. I could not stop laughing. Like, you're fucking ridiculous. Like, what? Yeah, it's just, it was terrible. I was like, so I've seen people do stuff. And I even had a friend of mine. Yeah, total frauds. I even had a friend of mine. We were filming a show. And, excuse me, as I said, I knew Anna Nicole Smith and I knew the person that buried her. I knew what was in the coffin from the person who buried her, who was in charge of her body. Okay. First hand, not psychically first hand. So this girl's on a TV show and my friends, she's talking about Anna's casket. And I'm like, that's not anything at all. Yeah, she did. She did. We, I said that in my thing. That's not anything at all in the casket that you're fucking talking about. My psychic friend goes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She's just doing the TV show. It's okay. I'm like, it's not okay. That's a straight face fucking lie. Like, it's one thing if she's getting it psychically, but it's like, she's not. She's making up shit. And I know this because I know firsthand, as I've told you, Sandy knew that, right? And so it's just, they do all kinds of things. So a hot shot is drugs put into your body against your will where you're shot up. Like they come by you in a, in a group of people and just jab you with a needle in your arm and then you drop to the ground. That's how they, they do like assassinations and shit. Somebody bump into the other one, give you a hot shot, you die, right? Um, no, I would never do that because I have children and my children, I'm not trying to con anybody while I have children. So um, it's not just not anything. And my kids thought I was batshit crazy until Keith saw Cheerio when Cheerio died and the head close up. Anyway, and Keith said to me, wow, it's real. And I said, yes, Keith, you think I was a fucking pathological liar? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> he was so cute. Anyway, um, these people do that. And when you have a psychic going out there with a group of people, like you have the Hollywood medium and his, and his management company, I was told by one of the um, PR firm girls that I would have lunch with every week who loves psychics and who took me on a press circuit with her for another movie. What the hell was that name of that movie? Uh, was it Oculus? Oh my God. I don't know if I said that right. Anyway, I was on the press circuit for that with her. So they would gift me 
to read every the actors and all the people that came in. So they do that. They hire psychics and the psychics gift people with readings, right? So she went and got a reading with the Hollywood medium when he first came out. She got it for free because she's PR and she's the huge PR company. And she got it there and she said, literally said, I didn't finish the reading because he was full of shit. That was her opinion. And I'm only speaking her opinion from that. I don't know if he did that because he wanted to make sure he got the job or what. I don't need a job that badly. Um, yeah, I don't know how old he is. And I'm not saying he's not psychic. I'm just saying that's what I was told. So you hear through the gossip line and <clears throat> her coffin was in Barbados or the Bahamas. And Sandy, who was on her show, so I met Anna through Anna through Sandy. Sandy was her hairdresser, her right hand, and at one point her lover was on the TV show with her. Sandy does bitch and hair extensions. Anyway, that's how I met Anna was through Sandy. So that's how I know that. Sandy was the one that buried her body. Sandy was the one that was in charge of doing that, okay? So that's a fact. So when I see another psychic making up shit that I know not to be true, it's ridiculous. So it pisses me off. Um... Why psychic? Why not medium? Well, psychic, medium, those are two. It was Bahamas or, yeah, wherever it was. Those are two different things. Most people have some kind of intuitive ability. Psychics have a variety of information um, in two, yeah, 2008, I think, or 2007 in March. Um, yeah, psychics do read on different timelines. So you'll have people that are sensitive. So they can feel everything in the room around them. You will have people that are... Anna was a client of mine, and what this girl was saying on TV was not true. And I met Ann, Anna through somebody I know, okay, who was on her show. So when people say that shit, I'm like, that is not true. When they're talking about burying her, it wasn't true. So there was a lot of misinformation, and the psychics were using it in a certain way. Um, she's definitely a battered soul. And... Um, <clears throat> No, I can't explain ectoplasm as it is the residence of a ghost that comes from one dimension into another. You have the ectoplasm to show that they've been there. That's as far as I know what it is. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say, but yeah, you can check out if Deanna is. You can look for sure. I don't know, Kim. I don't know about that. Understand, though, with a lot of these people, when they go out there and they are in the midst of traveling as a psychic team from city to city to city to city okay very bright energy yeah i don't know about that doesn't he say he's straight i don't know maybe i'm wrong um so i feel like okay i feel like when they go on tour like that it's about a lot of energy and just making the money because the 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 packagers the handlers own it and if everybody's paying I don't know, $100 a seat, $30 a seat, 500 people, five people are getting a reading, five people are getting a reading. Anyway, there's sensitives, there's psychics, there's clairvoyance, clairaudience, claircognizance, clairsentience, clair blah, blah, blah. There's empaths, there's heightened empaths, there's mediumship abilities, and mediumship abilities can encompass all of those different gifts. Some people see and hear the spirits, some people know they're there, some people get a feeling, some people dream them. Some people get it sometimes. It's not like a faucet. Turn it on, turn it off. You do the best you can do. Um, do, you, do you have... No, I don't have psychic wars with anyone because I have the same group of friends that I've had my entire life as far as psychics. And I don't really deviate from it because I don't feel a need to. And I'm not going to compete with another. So I'm not here to fucking compete with anybody. Not looks, not for a husband, not for my kids. Not for fucking anybody. I will be who I am and that's that. So that's it. That's what I will do. So uh, yeah, why would I compete? I don't care. Those are called witch wars and they do throw shit at you, but it doesn't bother me because I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Um, no, they do throw shit at you. I don't know who, it's not for me to say who the real mediums are. I just know what I've come across. I just know what I've seen. I'm not sure who's real or not. Your shoulders are buckled. Yeah, they probably are because I've been sick and I'm coughing like that. You're right. My chiropractor would yell at me. He would be like, you need to do your door stretches. But yes, the stress of this cold and coughing like this. Yes, definitely. 
problematic. Good observation. Um, yeah, my thoughts on the Long Island medium, I'm not going to speak about it. I don't, you know, I know what I know behind the scenes. So whatever. All I can tell you is when that show came out, my little Keith came through the living room and said, she looks like a cheap knockoff of you. So that's her character. That's what they do. That's what I just want. Clear sentience, clairvoyance, clear anything is clear sight, clear hearing, clear, clear speaking, clear feeling, clear knowing, clear knowledge. All of that. Um, so yeah, it has a lot to do that. Hi from the UK. So yeah, I'm trying to feel better. <coughs> I'm trying. It feels like it's going up and out. So um, my feelings on Sylvia Brown are from people I know that know her. I do not know her other than I did TV shows with her, but she kind of predicted COVID. So that's kind of a cool thing, isn't it? She predicted COVID, didn't she, in that book? Like, rock on, woman. She's been dead for a while, but she did it, okay? Yeah, I mean, she did it. Yeah, Beth, your husband is third generation. Yeah, it is a genetic thing. She did that. So she predicted that. That's pretty good. Deja vu means... On a different timeline, you've been there, done that, and the timelines match up. Deja vu is like, why is that so familiar? I have a vivid memory of doing, walking out, going to the ice cream truck, getting an ice cream, and you're like, wait a second. Timelines come together. Doreen Virtue, she made her millions off of her tarot cards, and then she became born again, and then she chose a different mindset. She's allowed to do that. It's her life. So I don't know for what her reason is. I do not believe God would make his people with the ability to do things and that it is a bad thing. So that's my personal preference of belief. I don't believe tarot cards are bad because they're inanimate objects. It's like saying this cup is bad. The cup is bad if you put boiling hot water in it with fucking cayenne pepper and throw it in someone's eyes. Then the cup becomes bad. But is the cup by itself bad or not? Intentions, exactly. So is the cup bad or not? And, and understand, entities can come through anything. They can talk to you in the mirror in your bathroom. They can talk to you wherever. So you can use tarot cards, not use tarot cards. Use a Ouija board, not use a Ouija board. Congratulations on your engagement. I definitely believe in reincarnation. I've seen it. I, but that's my own personal experience. So I've seen it. I don't know why we reincarnate and why. <laughs> why we're here. Now that's another thing. I don't know. But yes, I do believe in reincarnation big time. Big time I do. So yeah, Hay House takes 90%. Understand this. I don't understand what's wrong with people. But if you want to sell something at Hay House, okay, so there's a lot. Did tarot at the strip clubs. There you go. Been there, done that. There's a lot of... Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of people who basically believe because if they go through Hay House, that gives them representation. You don't need representation as a medium, a psychic, or an astrologer. You don't need someone to validate you. That is a misnomer. So when people put on there, this is... The school I went to, they're trying to fit something that I call intuitive art or intuitively artistic into a box of nine to five and give you credentials. That's why if I were to say anything, I would never give credentials. People, any psychic that says I graduated from this and there's a bunch of them out there that say, I was certified as a psychic. Well, that's a nine to five bullshit. You can't be certified. And here's what I'm going to say to you. Certified by whom? And under whose authority? A person that owns the school that's charging you money to say that you are certified? It's not math. It's not the law. Like the law is written in a fucking book. <clears throat> like if you're going to be a lawyer, you do have to pass the bar, but everybody takes the same test. There's a group of psychics online and I'm not saying they're good or bad. I'm just saying there's a magazine that's run by this group of psychics and she certifies the psychics and they all put on their MO certified by this person. Well, she owns the magazine and you give her a cut of money every time you put in the magazine that Bob Olson, <coughs> excuse me, when he first came out, asked me, 
Do you want to be in my magazine? No, I don't. You are not an authority. I don't need to pay you. I don't care if I work. I mean, I got to pay my bills, but other than that, I don't care. Why and who are you to certify me? Like, no. Like what? No, fuck off and go away. You, under whose authority? I'm not even saying he's a good or bad person. I'm just saying, I don't need you to vouch for me. Why, what? No, then, then don't fucking, don't. But see, they do this. Like you're, this person gave you credentials. There's a lot of them that go to the mediumship schools, um, you know, back East. I'm certified out of here. If you hear that from a medium, don't go to them. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't go to them. Go to someone else. I'm not saying they can't be good and very talented, but they drop in IQ levels when they say that they've gone to that. It isn't astrology. Astrology has math. Even the interpretation of the mathematical movements of the planet are different. Okay? Are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't like us. You'll never hear that I'm certified. I am certified as an astrologer. But again, that doesn't mean I'm any good at reading. I might be fucking stupid at reading, okay? Numerology. Yeah, numerology is great, but you don't need a certification. You either understand it or not. Most psychics won't read in public. Yeah, it takes a level of courage. They mock us. I've been mocked up the ass my whole life. So as a stripper, as a runaway, as a dummy, as a, you know, not educating from grade school, high school, as an adopted person, I get mocked for that. That's a family thing though. But for God's sakes, for the love of God, and either I do my work and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. See, psychics don't want to have you be wrong. Of course, you don't want to be wrong. You don't want to give someone wrong information, but you're not a fucking all-knowing God. If you knew everything, you probably wouldn't be here. You'd be running. So yeah, temple dancers, Peter, Peter, that's what I am. Um, exactly. We, the same thing. So, I mean, we're not going to be a hundred percent accurate. There's people I don't pick up information and I'm not afraid of saying it. Glennis McCants, I believe is a numerologist, right? The numbers lady. Yeah. So she ran in the same circles at Paramount. So yeah, again, I was blackballed. I wear my tiara of being kicked out of fucking everything. Okay. Um, did you like Sylvia or not? Let's see. Yeah, no, I know I get what I get, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be 100% right. It doesn't matter. Like, I can be wrong. Some people don't like my readings, so don't like my readings. You don't have to. I'm not obligated to be 100% right. No psychic is. We get what we get as we get it and do the best that we can while we're getting it, and it might not always be right. And that's okay. It's fine. Matt Frazier has a TV show. If he has a TV show, he's controlled by the network for money, period, end of conversation. You may like him. Louise Hayhouse, before she sold out, was fine. But if you have to take your artistic God-given gift and you have to pay Hayhouse 90% of what you make to put their label on your stuff, why the fuck would you do that? Why are you so weak-minded that you think that that's a good thing to do? They're the reason that there's a problem for that. They're the reason that that is a problem in our society, that people think that that means that you know what you're doing. It doesn't. It means that you're giving them money. That's what it means, okay? So if Hay House is taking 90%, they're like a pimp. So you're dealing with street hoes, okay? No offense to anybody out there. You don't need to do that. They don't need to do it. They're fucking talented, but they want that money up front. So they do that, okay? They do that. Okay, whatever he is, I thought Matt Frazier had to show, but whatever it is, he's on camera a lot. You're on camera a lot. There's a problem. Just trust me. I don't know how the networks work now. You couldn't pay me to go on one. They'd have to pay me a lot and I'm still going to be a wild card with my mouth. So yeah, when you look at it, but it's like when I was approached initially all the way back down by Bob, by Bob Olson and he was like, you know, I can verify you. I don't fucking need you to verify. I don't care if people think I'm a fucking circus clown. I... And people, okay, so John would introduce me and they're like, what do you do? And I'd be like, I'm a prostitute. How are you? John's like, you can stop saying that right now. And in fact, he'll scream at me. What's with the prostitute? I'm like, it's 
better to say that than fucking be looked at the way these fucks look at you. So I'd rather say I suck a dick than I'm a psychic. But now I'm out here public, so it's okay. But I'm saying that's what I did. Nobody needs verification from anybody. The only reason you need verification probably is if you're in the medical profession because the, the medical profession, they're doing surgery on you. So there must be a standard and same with the law. And probably in things like, I don't know, the driving license and all of that, like your driver's license, why would a psychic need to be verified? By whom? What if the psychic can't read your dead whatever? I had some guy try to verify me. He goes, yeah, you're not psychic. I'm like, mm, you're jealous or you're a weirdo because I didn't get what he wanted me to get, but I know what I got. Okay, so I know. We know when we know what we get. So it's just, I don't know what to say. When the Cleveland girl's missing. No, no, Sylvia, Bella, Sylvia was not wrong about that. Sylvia was spot on. You will see your daughter when you die. The mother died before the daughter was found. When the daughter dies, she will see her mother. She said it backwards and people took it one way. In psychic language, it's not spot on. It's not like A equals B equals C. One plus two plus two is five. It's not like that. So Sylvia Brown actually, and I will defend her at that point, she actually got that. Yes, I have met her a few times. No, don't be sorry, honey. I understand a lot of people said that. But she said to the mother, okay, she said to the mother, she said, you will see your daughter when you die. Now, the mother died before she ever saw her daughter, but eventually the daughter is going to pass away. We all do. And she will see her daughter because her daughter died, you see? So she just kind of mixed it up and did the best she could. And Sylvia Brown had some balls. She went out there and said shit. She just said whatever she could say, okay? So she did. So that is very good. Again, she wrote a bunch of books. So, hey, applaud to her. And I have heard that she was accurate. I have heard that she was accurate. I have personal friends who went to her. And it's preference. She could read you and be fucking accurate and then read me and not. Because maybe I have walls up, right? Maybe I'm the one that has the problem. Maybe I'm the one that doesn't, you know, know how to do it. She was, um, my ability scared me when I predicted both of my son's deaths. My stepson and my biological son, Yes. I got it very strong and I ran to Deanna's house and I asked her the week before Keith died, which one of my kids, which one of my kids, my candle blew. I knew it. I heard the message. I said it out loud at Lila's birthday party before Keith died. That scared the living shit out of me. Yeah, because I knew one of my kids was going to die. I don't get that wrong usually. So um, that I get right. And it, But it's happened yeah, it happened. Um, I'm trying to write a book. I have to catch up. Let's see. Sylvia Brown was good one indeed. Yeah, I think she, I think if people think she's good, she's good. No psychic's going to be 100% with everybody. And you're going to piss people off. And they're going to say you're full of shit. They do it with plastic surgeons too. They do it with dentists. They do it with everybody. But on a whole, you want to have a repertoire that's pretty accurate. Um, oh, the candle blew up. I found a picture of that just the other day. It's on the phone I'm filming but the candle blew up um, in my kitchen sink. And I was at Lila's birthday party with a table full of the grandmothers, the adults. And I just looked up. I heard it, Claire Audient. One of your sons is going to die by September. And that is what I said at the birthday party. And that scared me. And I was frantic. I was on, I was frantic. Just the week before Keith died, I asked Carol, can we, can we take the bikes? Because I didn't know if it would be Jason or Keith and they both had bikes. At that point, I, I knew that Keith had a bike. And I asked Carol, can, can you get a tow truck? Can we tow it? And Carol said, my garage is open. We can tow them to my house. And I said to John, can we tow the bike, steal them out of the driveway? And he said, they're just going to get the money. I wish I'd have fucking stolen the bike. When Jimmy died, the week before Jimmy died, I went and had lunch with him at John's work. He worked for John at that time. And no, Deanna didn't know. She couldn't tell me which one and she wasn't picking that up. I knew it. She saw the chaos, but she didn't see that. I knew it. I was frantic. Anybody who was talking to me, I was like, one of my kids is going to die by September. I'm going to bury one of my kids by September. I get what's called psychic Tourette's when that happens. And when it happened with Jimmy, I went to his work, which was John's work, which was the building that we have. And I sat with him outside. I said, how do you want me to bury you? And he told me how to bury him. I said, because you're going to die. 
the last phone call, which was the day before he died, I picked up and said, you got to go back to rehab because they had banned me from driving him to rehab. They said that he wasn't, he had to come himself. You know, he had to want to do it because I've been driving him. I used to take Jimmy to the rehab, or not the rehab, the, the, the drug doc, whatever, therapy. And Keithy was little and I would breastfeed Keithy in the car with Jason in the back seat, and we picked Jimmy up. And I loved Jimmy dearly. And I said to him, I said, you have to go back. And he I, he laughed at me because <laughs> that's what they do. Um, he laughed at me and I just remember saying, you're going to fucking die. And I just said, you fucking asshole. And I hung up on him and it was the next day that he was dead. So um, that happened and that threw me right out of my auric field. I threw right, that went right out of myself and when with Keith, I just assumed it would have been Jason because Jason was more of a reckless person on a whole. He's more reckless. And then it was Keith. And when it was Keith, I couldn't understand. I just, but I knew it. And two days before Keith died, him and Jason walked through my living room. I was at my old house with John sitting on the couch. And these two, my stepson is Jimmy. Those, um, and when Keith was born, Jimmy died. Anyway, when the, two, when the two boys came through the house, it was Jason first with Keith following him like always because Keith loved Jason so much. And they both had these big grins on their face. And I said, listen, you two motherfuckers, because that's how I talked to them. I said, it's Mars retrograde. Jason is a cancer. Yeah, I said, it's Mars retrograde. You two need to watch how you drive, you two little motherfuckers. And then because they wouldn't listen to me. And they, <laughs> I said, no, I'm telling you astrologically, you need to watch how you drive because one of you is going to die. I don't know which one. And they both kind of just looked at me, ran up the stairs and did the fucking usual thing those kids did to me. And it was Keith. And it, it was Keith. It was not Jason. Um, so you would have think it would have be Jason because Jason's just more flippant with things. Like he's more apt to like, if you tell him to ride his bike off the roof, he would do that. So he was kind of like fear, fearless. He would do that stuff. Um, so yeah, for me, I've gotten it. I got it when John's mother died. No, Jason and I made a deal. Did I tell you guys that story? Okay. So last, no, it was July in 2021. Jason bought a brand new motorcycle, like Keith's motorcycle. Yeah. John knows how I know. Yeah. They all know how I know. I was so mad at Jimmy. And when Jimmy died, I screamed at everybody in the family. You fucking deserve it. I fucking warned you all. And But it's not their fault, but that's how I responded. I went bananas because no one did shit. Oh, he'll be okay. No, he won't be okay. And he wasn't. And it actually fucked my head up. It fucked Jason's. It really fucked John's head up. Um, anyway, Jason bought a bike like, yes, yes, he did after. Yeah, but it was after... I said it in a different way when Keith, yeah, Brian did. When Keith got the bike, Brian said, I don't have a good feeling about that. But nobody in their right mind would think it was Keith. He would always think it. Well, nobody wants to deal with their family reaction, right? If you have a drug addict, you have to fucking get honest with your own addiction. And if you're doing coke and your kid's doing coke, then you have to stand in front of your kid and you have to fucking say, I did drugs and this and that. Hi, Bobby. Yes, J J Bobby knows the story. It was July of 21. Jason calls me at like 10 o'clock at night. He's in Alqua Delsey for you in the Valley. Y'all know where that uh, is. By Canyon Country, by Palm, on the way to Palmdale. Anyway, his brand new bike, the 2020 bike that he bought, or it's 2021, whatever, the brand new bike that he had for like a month, it the clutch broke down going onto the freeway up there in the dark pitch black. So he called me and we have a friend that does tow trucks. So he said, let's get a tow. And I said, you know what? Let's wait till the morning. So he hid the bike. I said, just back off the freeway. He said, well, I'm going to try to ride it home. I said, do not ride the bike home, pull it off the freeway because if the clutch breaks and you're in the fast lane, you're fucked, you're gonna end up dead because the car will hit you and there's something wrong with the clutch, right? So he pulled the bike off the road, he hit it. Mom, they're gonna steal it. I said, no, we'll be out there in the morning. Had to drive him to work, CBS, and drove him to work on that particular show he was on. Picked him up, we went to meet my friend that is a tow truck friend, okay? So can we call him, we're on our way. And he's on his way. I know it was. He's on his way. Bobby's right. <coughs> and Jason, we get there and Jason's like, they stole my bike. I told you they were going to steal it. And I'm like, that's okay. I was happy they stole it. 
Anyway, we're in the car and we're reporting it to the sheriff's office because it's the Palmdale Sheriff's, I believe, in that area, all in that area. So the sheriff kind of had like a fucked up tone with me, or I thought he did because, you know, I'm hostile at this point. But so Jason, we're on speakerphone. So I go like this to Jason, speakerphone's on. And I go, I go, he goes, well, if we find it, which I doubt or whatever, I said, and I'm sorry, what is your name? And he said, and I quote, this was a sheriff, not a police officer. He said, my name is Keith. My name is Keith. I looked at Jason. He looked at me. I said, that's a message. We're getting you a car. So we went to get a car, which was a really hard thing to do at the time because there weren't a lot of cars out in our price range. I'd gone up like triple. So anyway, we got Jason a car and he agreed not to ride a bike again. So at least for now, that's the agreement. But the sheriff's name was Keith. And I was like, if he hadn't have had an attitude with me, I would have never asked his name. So, and they did find the bike. It was stolen by two meth heads that repainted it with spray paint outside of their trailer. So they, re they repainted it with spray paint outside of their trailer. Like some, it was a beautiful color. They repainted it. It's like, yeah, y'all are on meth. Anyway, the cops told us it was a meth thing. So Jason agreed. Oh, Keith told me it's six months. Yeah, Keithy, yeah. So Jason got a car and he agreed not to ride a motorbike. And I was so grace, grateful because after Keith died, Jason would be on his bike <clears throat> and he was run over the day after Keith died, the next day coming home from the gym, not high, not drunk, not doing anything. He'd been working out. Anyway, he, he I had to take him to the hospital because this lady with a mask on drove over his foot and it was completely, and I was like in the emergency room with Jason having a fucking nervous breakdown on the phone with Deanna, like sobbing, numb. I, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Anyway, I would always go, you guys know where the Empire Center is. I'm sure y'all do if you live in Burbank. Anyway, yeah, Jason got hit by an old lady with her husband wearing a mask and, and he was banging on the car. They drove over his leg. Keith was 24 and, um, yeah, I bet you, yeah, I bet you there isn't, but he said his name was Keith. Anyway, uh, I would come out of the empire center. Like I'd go to Ulta or something to buy something and I would look, I'd see a motorbike and I'd recognize the body and it would be Jason. So the months after Keith died, I would see Jason and he could always read me that I was behind him in a car and he would look and I'd be like, I couldn't look at him because I couldn't bear to watch him on a motorbike. I had to detach. I've never had to detach so much in my life. Detach at the funeral, detach going to the scene of the accident. He would fly up on his motorbike. I, I just, I couldn't watch. I literally had to turn myself and say, if this happens again, I have no control over it. And I had to walk away from it. It was just very... Um, yeah, Keithy's always on my phone. Yeah, Keithy's always on my phone. Was he on my phone? <laughs> yeah, that's Keith and Jordan on my phone. Keith's standing up and Jordan. Jordan just had a birthday. Um, Keithy's little bestie, Jordan, one of his besties. And um, who wears my old people? So July will be three years for Keith. But it was something. So like, it's weird. And I know a timeline shift shifted when he died. But when Brian read the chart after he died, he read um, the declinations, I think. And he was like, this is so dead on. So like it showed up in the chart, but nobody wanted to, you're not going to read a chart to that degree. Um, oh, I felt Keith move through me the night that he died. And I knew it was him. He came to hug me, but he was fragmented. I told you that story. Like my friend Charlie Robinson from Night Court when his daughter died, the fragmented when I saw him. I was complete, and he was at the gym the next day after he found out his daughter died. She was 31. I remember talking to him, but I could see it on him. Um, yeah, I could see that. So Keith hugged me then, and I did, Keith tried, I mean, he manifested in front of you all, but it's been a little while, but I do feel Keith around at times. I do, because somebody will pull my hair. <laughs> I don't have much hair, but somebody will pull the back of my hair. They're fragmented because they're not in a physical body. So the energy is 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 fluid. It's we are contained here. We are contained in in this. 
So um, have I channeled Keith? Keith, I, I try to reach Keith all the time. Yeah, you saw him manifest in the blanket. I didn't do that. So he's, I know, Tulip love him, Keithy. Can you tell? No, I, I've seen it on a few people, but not much, really. Um, yeah, Charlie. Charlie and I used to work out at the gym. He was a runner and adopted and a Scorpio, if I remember correctly. And he married one of the um, aerobics teachers. But I remember walking through the parking lot. My kids were little. His daughter was 31. Then he had a son with, and I can't remember her name. But anyway, he had a son with her when he married her. And um, I remember he was walking up to the gym. We'd always say hi because it's like, you know, you go to work, you work out at the gym at the same time. We used to be on the treadmill. And when I saw him, I saw his energy like static on a TV set. And I said, are you okay? And he just straight out said, my daughter died. And it just hit me. I was like, I don't even know what to say to you. And I think that that was a drug overdose. And it just, you could see it tore him. He was, he was steadfast and he just continued on. I did the same thing when Keith died. I literally did the same thing. I just kept going to my appointments all day and doing what I do, you know. So that's all I could do. That's all anyone can do. Um, I don't know what that means, Gina. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Um, yeah, it's very, it's, yeah, Charlie, I heard he died. I, I was talking to you guys when I heard, I was in my old house. Yeah, I heard he died. He was older and he was adopted too. Very nice man. Super duper nice. Just a runner, marathoner, runner. We talked running. We did treadmilling. Um, we did weights <laughs> and he had a nice, I think he must have been a Leo rising. I've got to look that up if I haven't looked it up. Because he had a really round face. But he was a Scorpio too. But he had to be a Leo rising in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that gym, there was a lot of people in Burbank. And it was just the YMCA. Like it wasn't like a whoop de doo gym, you know. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to post that. I know. Amanda Bynes. Yes, her MK Ultra is completely, completely fracturing. Um, completely I'm looking up his natal chart. Completely fracturing. I'm trying to remember if he is a Scorpio. Uh, no, they say he's an Aries. That is just not true. That is not true. He was a Scorpio because I remember going, yeah, Scorpio. Somebody put Aries. I'm like, he is not a fucking Aries. Sun in Scorpio, 77 when he passed. Born November 9th. I knew that about him nicest person that you would ever meet super super nice um this says somebody had him in his aries that's a lie lie <laughs> lie liars um okay let's see what they have they don't have a time oh well they put 10 p.m i don't know why they put 10 p.m um yeah, they have him as a Cancer Leo rising. I could see him as a Cancer rising. Drake is a Cancer man Leo rising. Yeah, I could see it. I was born with Call. Oh, yeah. No, Call on the face is a psychic. That's how Jason was born. That's a psychic baby. Jason was born in the water with the call that they called it that I didn't know it was called the call. That's a psychic baby. So there's psychic. Yeah, as a medium. Jason's definitely a medium. Never tell him I said that. Don't ever do that. Charlie Robinson is who I was talking about from Night Court. Um... Yeah, Pippi Lou. That's a great name, Pippi Lou. I used to call Tulip Pippi Longstocking, and I called Tulula Lou. <laughs> Pippi Lou, you're a mixture of my cats. Um, yeah, I have 29 degree Leo rising. That's unfortunate that Drake has that. Um, Jason, call your mother. He did call me today. I wanted to ride a bike. I had to hide my riding. Yeah, I know. I am getting it. I did get another tattoo. I don't know what birthmarks on your thigh means. I did. I have to show you my tattoo. Now I'm going to be obnoxious. Here I go. Here it happens. I'm really sorry, but it's happening again. It's this little tattoo of Dewey right here. This little one. It's still kind of sore there. There. Jason, Keithy, Keithy. And then grown-up Keithy. I've got one more spot. It's this spot under here. So I'll be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. If we're done on that side. 
Since I have nothing to focus on, I shall be making my body art. You know why? Because I want to now at this point in my life. Um, yeah, the artist is fantastic. He's incredible. So shout out to Ruger. I love him for his work. Um, yeah, I don't know what the birthmark on the thighs means. I'm not sure about that. So yeah, I'm not sure. But there's there are different meanings for things. There are different meanings. Okay, so Amanda Bynes, who happens to be born on John's birthday, different year, which is April 3rd. So she's in Alec Baldwin. The April, the Aries are getting hit, especially on the 3rd, they're getting hit. Like, look at Alec Baldwin. Anyway, um, oh, shot in one lifetime. That's very good. D Miller time, do not get your eye surgery if you can jump right in right now, but we are in a Saturn retrograde, I think you might have to wait till early next year because we're going into a Venus retrograde and I forget when we said it's ending, but it's like November. So yeah, no, let's look up Amanda Bynes chart. Amanda, I feel so sorry for this little girl. She's having a complete, yeah, 4-3, they're bad shit crazy. I married a 4-16 then a 4-3. What was I thinking? Thank you, Bobby, for that. Let's see, natal chart. Let's say, uh, let's see, Amanda Bynes natal chart. Let's see. I feel so bad for that girl. She said her father molested her. She said she was farmed out. She said that that was happening. And she's the one having very normal breakdowns. I don't know about that, Eugenia Clooney or Cooney. Why is that girl out there? That poor girl's starving to death. I, I can't. I can't watch that. I mean, I'm glad that people love her, but my God, I just, I can't. Her spirit, I'm so sad for her. She's not eating, she's starving. Anorexia is a disease of self-hatred. It's just, four or five was my father-in-law. Um, okay, Amanda Bynes, 8.06 a.m. So I think we're going with double Aries here. Yeah, no, we're going with Gemini rising. Let's see, where is this chart? Let me pull it up. Okay, we got Aries Sun, Aquarius Moon, and Gemini Rising. She got loaded 8th and nine. She's probably born into a family where this is part of what happens. <coughs> There's a lot of varying accounts. I think I'm clearing up, you all. Yeah, Dan, uh, fuck, what is that prick's name? <sighs> Snyder. I, you know, I woke up this morning thinking, why? Hear me clearly, people in California, people at the TV networks. Brian Singer is a child molesting rapist. I don't care if he makes your X-Men movies and Disney wants to rehire him. He is a fucking pedo. Nickelodeon, Dan Schneider, is a fucking pedo. He molested everybody. What they do, because I was at a dinner party at Cousin Larry's. And I was talking about Dan Schneider five, six years ago. There was a mother there whose daughter worked on a show on Nickelodeon. And the girl was doing really well. But she quit because of Dan Schneider. She walked out. She took a different route. Good for her. Good for her. Here's the problem. In the industry, what these fucking losers do, Alec Baldwin, Kevin Spacey, what they do is they jerk off in group meetings while they watch their celebrities, the little girls at Nick and Lo Hugh Jackman, all of them, when they, when they look and they do, they watch the videos that they've gotten when they have these pool parties and they get their little dicks hard over children. That's a fact. Stop supporting these people. They get their dicks hard and then they show these at parties and it's a form of manipulation. So when somebody like Scarlett Johansson walks into a meeting, they pull up a video of her that's gotten illegally somehow from a party when she's a child and they try to shame her. Here's the thing, ladies. Here's the thing. If somebody rapes you, molests you, does whatever they do to you, own it. Yeah, that happened. What about that grown up? Don't hide it. Speak it. Speak it out there. It's not your fault. It's the grown-up's fault. And everybody in Hollywood wants their kids to be on camera. You know why? Because people make money on camera. We hear about it. So we're made to feel inferior. Yeah, that's what happens. Okay, anyway, little Amanda Bynes is having her MK Ultra, And I fully, fully believe, fully believe that she's from a family of that. So let's see what's happening. She's got... 
She's got Venus and Mars and Leo. She's darling, cute little girl. I don't think it, she's got, look at that. Saturn, she's coming into her Saturn return. Oh shit, we're in for it. We're hurt with her. And it's dead on right now and she just called for help. Here's what she did. She called 911 to help her and they're making it like she's crazy. She's trying to get fucking help from what they did to her. Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No one cares about the TV shows you did. Well, you fat fuck. You fat fucking slob. You ugly. Would never get a girl in your life. Piece of shit. You got a dick around with kids. You fucking pile of shit. And I don't care if, if Jamie Lynn Spears looked like she was 35. She was fucking 12. Amanda Bynes was 12. She was fucking 12. Okay? 12. So you, Dan Schneider, need to be beat up anytime you're seen in public. Anywhere you're seen in public. Brian Singer, you know how I hate him. Why do I hate him? Because I knew somebody that was in his fold as a kid. But anyway, Brian Singer, what did they do? They give him the X-Man movies. Everybody knows he has pedal parties. Everybody, everybody knows it, okay? He fucks boys, little boys. He worked with Mark Collins Rector. They got kicked out of Europe. They took all kinds of pictures of little children. Corey Hames being one of them. Corey Feldman. They don't ever say that, but that's a thing. So, yes, and Charlie Sheen, too. Look at how fucked up Charlie Sheen's karma is. Look at how fucked up Charlie Sheen. Winning. Okay, so Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Charlie Sheen, okay? Literally, his daughter comes out. She's 19 and says... She's a sex worker. I'm going to say this again. I cannot express it enough. I don't care if you don't believe me. Please listen to me. Please, please listen to me, okay? If you come from childhood sexual abuse, you will most likely end up in the sex work industry. I don't care what you men think to justify yourself. I'm bringing the mic out again. Well... She looked 45. Oh, well, she was 12, but who would know that? As soon as you find out she's 12, walk away. Walk away. What are you saying, men? You can't control yourself? Oh, tiger DNA. No, he said tiger's blood, adrenochrome. Tiger's blood. I figured out what that meant. The chrome, adrenochrome. Oh, did I scream that out here? We're going to be in trouble. That's what tiger's blood is. It's adreno. Got it? So men, when you say, oh, she wants to be, I've heard this recently that Christopher Walken, Bobby and I were talking about that. I can't look at his face. He looks like an old lady. I can't look at him. Like it doesn't look right. Anyway, when a man says, but she wants to be a stripper. She wants the attention. She was groomed to get that attention. She was groomed. Oh, well, she likes to fuck. Does she? Does she want to fuck strange men with your... Who do you think goes to prostitutes? Who do you think goes to them? Because you got many different levels. You got the street girls, and those are where your raunchy relatives, male, go out and find. I don't know. Somebody's probably with me, and I can't feel it. So I don't know. <clears throat> but thank you. If you guys pick up something, tell me. This is what I mean. I'm just dead inside. Um, yeah, married, married men... And men with perversions. So if you want to punch your wife in the face or choke her because you watch too much porn and you're a loser and your dick won't stay hard unless you fucking have to touch it yourself because you're a masturbator on the porn. Sorry, did I say that? Anyway, it came out loud. Anyhow, because you can't deal with real women, then you go find a prostitute and you beat her up because you're copying what you see in the porn and no one cares about her according to you. So it's like you're vomiting in her body. Take some accountability. The rich men go find a rich call girl and they're like, oh, it's different. It is no different. These people are using you. It's just packaged differently. It's the same fucking thing. Anyway, Charlie Sheen's daughter is now a sex worker on OnlyFans, <coughs> according to her. <coughs> according to, I don't presume, yeah, walk-in means walk-in Christ. Yeah, Christopher Walken, exactly. Uh yeah, of course, of course, Denise, Denise Richards said, by the way, I believe I might be wrong. This would be a blind item from a long time ago. 
and it's alleged, but I believe Mr. Sheen had one Lock Miss Locklear with him in the pursuit of said videos, and one of their daughters may have been privy to that foreplay with children themselves. This was an alleged blind, I, I, blind item. This was an alleged blind item, okay? So, yeah. Well, Emilio didn't take the deal. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know with Charlie Sheen, I know, we all know what he did. I I read the people on that show. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, her dad took her and left. That's right. So somebody who's a beautiful young actress, so pretty, so fucking beautiful, and then they get so drunk. No, love isn't blind. You couldn't make me do that to my kid. Um, you couldn't make me do that. Yes, Dan Schneider. Why is Dan... I'm going to go back to Dan Schneider. Why is... So, so hold on. Amanda B Bynes is in her Saturn return. Let's, let's hope she makes it out. Her Saturn is at 7 degrees, 12 seconds of Pisces, and it's retrograde, meaning her father is fucking a fuck, okay? So she has that. She's a birth path four, and she's five foot nine and a half. I mean, she's beautiful, smart, funny, friendly, all of those things. And they fucking destroyed her. Dan Schneider, you need to burn in hell. Okay, so the network, Nickelodeon, why are you hiring people like that? Why? Why? Because we want to see a Disney. Disney tried to hire back Brian Singer. People fight these people. Fight these fucking people. Brian Singer, oh, but he did X-Man. He's a pile of shit. He fucks little boys. That's a fact. Up the ass. Okay? And he turns them in for younger so when they hit 15, 16, or 17, he pays them off, and then he goes younger. And a woman married him. This bitch needs to be punished too. Had a kid with him. You bitch need to fucking take your kid away from that man, or you need to lose custody of your kid because he's a known child predator. What are we doing here? Just because he's in a movie? What is that? What is that? Yeah, Kamora Kim Lee, I'm just going to hold off on that for a little while. I'm not going to comment. Um, anyway, no, of course they're not in real marriages. They're in gay for pay marriages. He's a child diddler. He wanted a kid probably so he could sell his kid to his other friends in the industry. That's right. You heard me so that he could pass his kid around. They're born into these families and they rent their kids out. Who do you think Rachel Chandler is? Rachel Chandler, child handler, Rachel Chandler, child handler. Look it up. Bill Clinton, Obama, all of them. Why is that bitch around them when she's 13? Because she handles those magazines, those kids that look like heroin addicts and their models. Let's take all the makeup off them, make them look like dead zombies, and then sell them, okay? I heard about Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson is complicit. He's a billionaire. I don't trust him. He's not a billionaire. They did not give him that money unless he participated. So he's control opposition, period. Yes, I can't speak on to Chelsea Handler, happen to know her, or have read for her that way. But what I will say, Rachel Handler, <laughs> Chelsea Handler, exactly. Um, so when you're looking at it, they are all involved. How come no one's talking about Kevin Spacey? Two of the people that brought up their sexual abuse claims against Spacey died before they got into court, like run over, and no one finds that fucking strange? Why are we cowards? We're such cowards on this planet. Nobody find Oprah is a, Oprah, Oprah is a high witch. Sabrina Bittencourt. There's Oprah and there's Sabrina Bittencourt, okay? When Sabrina came out against John of God, rescued 15 of the breeding women, teenagers that were run away, that went to John of God, okay? Fifth, and I turned down going to see him actually, but 15 ladies, she got them out from John of God, who had a compound in Sao Paulo, Brazil. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, he took runaways into his thing. Come on, runaways, you have no life. So their judgment, they want food and he's a psychic healer and everybody like kissing his ass like that, right? So the women were putting cages there for 10, I think it was December 19th, 2019, he went to jail on 600 counts of rape, capturing, hijacking, um, hostage taking, whatever, okay? He bred them, okay? He bred them. 
Yeah, I didn't go to John. I, I was asked and I'm like, I'm not interested. They bred them, those women. So if you're a 14 year old runaway, they knock you up and they sell, these are baby farms, whether you want to hear me or not, whether people want to call me crazy conspiracy care person, any, I don't care. What they do is they breed children. The children don't have birth certificates. They don't have footprints. They don't have fingerprints. They can be sold into servitude in any house servitude, sex servitude, porn servitude, ritual servitude, dinner party servitude, anything like that. They can be sold into it because nobody fucking knows they're there because the pregnant women are in cages. <clears throat> so then they kill them when they're about 34 or they're reproductive or they can't breed anymore, but they're having kids every year. And those kids are being born and taken from them. And they're told that those kids are a sacrifice and it's a good thing. Now, today, just talking, have to ask you why God would sacrifice his first son, his only son, and that we think that that's a good thing. I don't believe that and I don't think that that's a good thing. And I don't think he died for our sins because there are sins going on here. And why do we always have to use the word sacrifice? Maybe he sent his son down here and the son got murdered. I do not think God sacrificed. Stop using the word sacrifice, okay? Stop doing that. Stop doing it. Yes, Jesus was a light worker, not saying that. But don't say a father sacrifices his son because then you're saying these people in the industry are sacrificing their kids for what they want. And I'm not going to sacrifice my children, period. So using the word, I know, the body and blood of Christ, what is that crap, right? Um, as above, so below. So here's what that means. <coughs> as above, so below actually means as above on the astral level where they spy on us, they implement below. It happens as above, not in heaven. Drake is gay. Yes, he does that gay stuff, as you call it. It's not gay stuff. It's abusive stuff. He has anal sex, but it's sodomy ritual in order to harness energy. So yes, but it's not because he's gay. It's because he's in the industry and this is part of their religion. Like all you Catholics that go and take the blood and the body of Christ, the communion. Same thing. Okay, stupid. Anyway, sorry, no offense. Um, <clears throat> as above, so below does not mean in heaven on earth. It means on the astral on earth. On the astral. That's where they are on the astral. They are on the astral. Okay, that is where they are on the astral. Yeah, I'd rather he be gay. Yeah, I'd rather he's gay. Exactly. That's what it is. It's on the astral. So as above, when they point like this, what they're doing is all of your presidents, all of your controllers, all of your captors on this planet are planning on the astral where the time is speeded up. They can spy on us through the astral here and they know who is what and who's doing what. So when they're gonna assassinate somebody like Martin Luther King, they put their components into order in order to do that, okay? So that's exactly as above, so below. That's what that means. As above, so below. Okay? So that's what they're doing. Okay? So when that happens, no, I've had this for like a week and a bit. When that happens, they're talking about the astral level. Not heaven. Not heaven. Okay? Heaven. Not heaven. So they're talking about that. I know. We need to be eradicated off this planet. That's what that is. That's when they say it, they understand any war that you're going to see that happens now has already been decided on the astral. They're already up there out of body and they can see it. And no one's going to tell me different because I have personally seen it. Meaning I can get out of my body and see on the astral. They maneuver up there and then they corral us to respond down here. So that's exactly what that's about. Okay. It's not heaven and earth. There aren't just two spots. If you've had a near death, you know that, okay? The Black Eye Club. Of course, you're going to make me say that so I can really get this video taken down. <clears throat> the Black Eyed Club, Panda Eyes, they fucking love it. That's why that, that fucking witch, Betty White. What? I mean, really, lady? She put on... No, astral is not etheric. Astral is just the level outside of here that we are encapsulated by. You have to, when you leave your body, get out of the levels around the earth where we're gridded. Thank you, Mindy, for that. Thank you so much.
We have to get out of the gridded atmosphere, the astral, which is one. I know God doesn't need a sacrifice. That's exactly right. They got all this man-made religion. God sacrificed his son. No, the fuck he didn't. No, the fuck he didn't. Okay. Sacrifice is bullshit. It's bullshit. Sacrifice. They want to get you used to saying they word and they want you to believe that your religious leader would do that. That's not what happened. I don't believe that's what happened. Sorry, just my opinion. Yeah, they're not all in heaven. If you're any kind of a medium, you know there's different levels and dimensions, okay? They may be in God's energy, God's power over there, but they're not all like in heaven running around. That doesn't even make sense. Is everybody in Beverly Hills? No, we live all over the world. Is everybody in England? No. Um, <clears throat> presumably casual is above. Yes, astral. Exactly. Heaven is above that. You've got to go up and up and up. So when they leave, <coughs> excuse me, when Keith left this planet, okay, when Keith left this planet, I felt his energy speed up warp speed. Ooh. And they were trying to pull his energy back. So he was propelling through the astral level. That is what is going on on this planet. As above, so below. And they fucking know it, okay? They got us gridded in here. Three feet above us and around us. I've heard three feet. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, it could be. Um, yeah, uh, CPTSD. Yeah, I get that. So when we're talking about panda eyes, what we're talking about is panda bears. So panda bears have little black circles around their eyes, like, you know, somebody who's been out partying all night and didn't wash their face off and then rub their eyes. How you achieve broken capillaries in the eye is through sodomy, especially on a little person, when you break through the barriers in the rectal area in order to open up the chakra system in order to harness the energy. I don't know how people don't fucking know that. And they just willy-nilly have anal sex all over the place. They just willy-nilly let people up their asses, let alone up the JJs. It's like, good God, people think, because that's going into your body. Like, seriously, just think about it. That's what they do, but they it harnesses. So they're able to keep tabs on you through that. And it splits your mind. That's what panda eyes is. It, some women who get in that, yeah, it's an energy exchange, but not in a good way at all. Why do you want to harm somebody like that? Any single, Tina, give me a break. Any single person who you have sex with, who is invested in hurting you is a piece of shit. So if you have a partner and they say, stop, please stop, please stop. Betty White put panda earrings on her ears before she died. Isn't she cute? She had dangling pandas. Yeah. Yeah, Betty White, you fucking whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so they, they, they do it. I think Tina Turner's harvested. I think she was born into it. <coughs> that's what I think. Sorry. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. She did. Who walks around? Well, you're fucking 85, 90, whatever you're doing. And suddenly you decide I'm going to put on panda earrings. Why? Because you're such a bitch. You're such an old bitch. Fuck you. Everything you've done is a fuck you for that. Um, I told you, Betty, they break capillaries in the eye sockets. That's how the black eyes come. So what would break capillaries? Let's say you're eight. Let's turn you around. And instead of using your vajay, let's put it up the other way. And let's really rip through there and harm you. And it's going to show here. And that's what they do. That's what they do. That's what they do. Sorry, it's a true thing. It's what they do. So they can do that, but it doesn't mean I have to. It's intense pain and it breaks the capillaries. It's the blunt force trauma. So if you see somebody walking around with panda eyes and their hair up in little panda knots, there's a real singer. What's her name? She has little monsters all around her. She got the fucking panda eyes on. Do you don't think we fucking know? Why are you wearing a goddamn meat suit out there? Why are you wearing a meat suit? Why are you wearing a fucking meat suit? 
why you think we're stupid. It's fine if you think you're going to get rich and money for that, but you're not. You're going to keep recycling. The undead are these people that keep coming back into this life to play those positions by the demons that run this planet. And they are demons. They're not even the government. It's above them. They come back and back and back to play different roles. And they keep doing the same stupid shit to try to convince Marina Abramovic, she's a spirit cooker. What does that mean? All that that means is to um, conjure up an entity and give it a vessel to live in. So the physical body, your person body, when you do drugs, slaps you out and lets another demon in. Now we got your host body that looks like you with another energy inside it. So they do spirit cooking in order, right? In order to try to put the entity into the object in order to carry it like a genie in order to let it out where they want it to, to go into whom they want it to go to. <coughs> Sorry. Woo, that's why they do that. That's what they do. That's what they do. So by using feces, blood milk, whatever, period, pads, whatever the fuck they use, the entity is attracted to that. They, they harness the entity's energy in the object, the planter, the doll, the whatever. They take this and they put it near who they need it to be near in order for it to take over the host body. So if you think that you're just your physical, you are not. There are things that can come into you. Yeah, they do this. I mean, good for them. Good for them. I don't agree with them. I don't care how fucking much money you have. You don't impress me with your money. That's a nice box, Peter said. No, it's a tissue box. It's Kleenex. Um, anyway, that's, yeah. Anybody in Hollywood is suspect. I'm Yeah, I've got to get my oregano oil. Anybody is suspect. That's what they do. It's disgusting. They do this shit in order to fuck with us constantly. It's terrible. I can feel my lungs now. Ugh. Okay, so it's a problem. See, here's the thing. Everybody's so fucking greedy on this planet to be seen as someone because we are taught from birth that those people are special. They're special. They're on TV. That's why we all think they're special. They're not fucking special. They're evil. They're not special. So we think, oh my God, I want to be like that because of course I want Corvettes. I want fucking Stingrays. I want to travel to wherever the hell, Turks and Caicos. I want to go travel castles in England. I want to fly on a jet. I, why would you not want that? I want to get plastic surgery when I'm older. I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. Will you make a choice? You may, of course, Kanye said he sacrificed his mom. He said it. And do you not find that interesting that that girl, Jackie O, <clears throat> there she is getting plastic surgery. Ladies, do not. I think she died because she had the surgery in the retrograde. I think. I don't know when she exactly had it because I didn't know who she was. Paige told me who she was. They always die in the care of doctors. Why do they die in the care of doctors? You're in a fucking doctor's office. So Michael Jackson pays a doctor to watch him and dies, okay? Kanye's mom's getting plastic surgery and dies. Joan Rivers is in getting in a colonoscopy or whatever the fuck and dies. And the doctor takes pictures of her instead of trying to resuscitate her. Because that's fucking normal. That's fucking normal. We don't hear shit about that. We don't hear caca. This Jackie O girl, here's where she made her mistake. Free. Ladies, gentlemen, if someone offers you something for free, don't do it. The energy is out of balance to begin with. They play or prey on the fact that you want something. Oh, it's going to be good if I get this. I'm getting something. That is your own greed. Step back from that. Step back from that shit. She had three babies. She shouldn't have died. It was, I mean, she's in America. She shouldn't have died. Of course, the doctors are paying. They're, oh, Heart, Heart, Henry Pasternak, yes, he's a handler. Do you see what he wrote? Did you see what he wrote to Kanye? If you don't shut up, we'll drug you and you won't see your kids. 
Why ain't nobody talking about that? Why is that normal? Why is that okay? It's not. It's not okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, come on. All right, you guys. I literally have to start yapping. Stop yapping. Um, Mary Tyler Moore, of course. I believe so. Can I prove it? No, I just believe so. And maybe they don't think they're doing anything wrong because they are taught that their good out deeds do their bad. And like Catholics, they're in a huge group of people and they think other religions are stupid, right? Don't you think? Mormons think it. Uh, evangelicals think it. Catholics think it. So why wouldn't they think it? It's their religion. Just look at it like that. It's their religion. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, what I wanted to say, oh yeah, my books are open. So my books are open. Go check, go check. Uh, Deanna, you can go to her website and Brian didn't get back to everybody in time. So if he missed responding to you, go on Facebook and find him and email him. Okay. So email him if you missed it because he got so bombarded that he kind of lost track of people. So meaning he didn't respond to everybody. Anyway, I am peacing out because I got to have some hot tea or something. Okay, bye you guys. Bye you all. Bye guys.